Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I have a little bit of sunshine coming in from the window. It's a bright, sunny day. Uh, um, welcome to the class. We're going to be doing Google School today. Uh, my name is Alex Cooper. If you've not been in one of my classes before, um, my name is Alex Cooper. I teach the computer classes for the Columbia County Library in Evans, Georgia, the Harlem Library, and also the Uchi Creek Now Grovetown Library with the new building and everything. So we're doing a class today and we're going to be covering Google School. We've been covering a lot of stuff. So this is kind of a little bit more advanced than our basic internet class or even our internet security class because we're mostly focusing on what Google has to offer. And also we will be talking about some of the things that sadly Google's going to be taking away. So July, uh, they actually be taking away the free unlimited uploads, but you can still uplo upload videos and photos and stuff until that time uh, for free and they said they're still going to host them and everything so taking videos pictures now is the best time start backing your stuff up so you'll have it for the future at no cost but again sadly the free stuff's going to go away we'll be talking about that too so welcome welcome to class and everything let's see if i can do that a little bit anyway so welcome to class and everything. Feel free to post any kind of ch uh, comments you have in the chat. Very glad that you're here with me today. And of course, do realize, feel free to post any questions that you have. And if you did come from our, our live classes, it's a great time to come because, of course, that's when you can ask live questions too. So. If you're watching this on a review, which is a, a previously a play, so that's perfectly good because you can fast forward and rewind. But do you realize if you come for the live event, then you can ask me questions too. Let's go ahead and let's talk about what classes we have coming up for this month. So it is December, so happy December, everybody. Yay, with our little snowman up there and everything. So we've already done some fun classes, Raspberry Pi class. This morning we actually did a Let's Make a 3D Snowman. We're going to have two more opportunities to join me for doing that class again. And one of the things, as I like to say, is when we do live classes or classes in general, uh, watch the latest one because it's probably I've learned something new, covering something new, learned some new trick that I can share and stuff. So that's a lot of fun class. We did that this morning. And then, of course, we're doing our Google School tomorrow morning. We're going to be doing on the Grovetown Facebook page Gadget Help with Alex on, fa on the Grovetown Facebook page. So come join me for that. And then tomorrow afternoon, we're going to be doing some Python coding with digital snowflakes. So we're going to be using our turtle drawing to learn about making digital snowflakes on our screen. Okay. These are for all ages. We'll do our tutorial. So it will be step by step. And then next week, a big one to come for is our holiday gadget and gift ideas, stuff you want to buy people for Christmas or the holidays. And then you can actually cover it up and get information about um, new computers, new tech stuff. And I'll be talking about holiday gift um, lists and everything like that. And the pricing, uh, the interesting part is that our internet buying and, um, buying and selling class, shopping class, which is on the 9th, we're going to be doing as it actually covers Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Of course, those are gone, but there's still a lot of re really great deals out there, especially if we hang on to the stores. And if there's stores that have not made their their um, the goals that they wish uh, for the year, they're actually going to be doing a lot of different sales. So I expect this year we're going to get a ton of different sales uh, happening a little closer to Christmas, um, for some, probably similar to Black Friday and stuff like that. All right, and then we'll be doing our, th let's make a 3D snowman again. And on the 10th, we're actually going to be doing uh, the digital snowflake. And a big one is the cut, uh, cord cutting. Make sure you come for that. So I've got a lot of big changes going on. i got a lot of um, new apps that we're going to be talking about, some updates on some of those. Do you realize some of our services are going to be going up in price as much as $10 a month? So we'll be talking about that and talking about alternatives and al antennas and all kinds of stuff. And then we got res another Raspberry Pi project uh, coming on, so come join me for that. And then we'll be finishing up the month doing our digital snowflakes um, in Python. And then we'll be doing another Facebook Live. And then we'll be animating a snow scene 
So we'll be made, we've made our snowman a few times, and three times, and then we'll actually be doing our snowflakes and also our animated snow scene. So usually the last week I try to focus on what our big theme of the month is, and that's our big theme is our snowman stuff. On a little side note, if you're looking for free ebooks and free audio books, all you need is your library card. Uh, we've switched from the RB Digital to Libby, so all you need to do is to download the Libby app. Don't um, load the Evans Library. It'll say what library you with. Don't say Evans. Don't say uh, Grove Town. Don't say Harlem. Say Greater Clarksville Regional Library System, and then click Georgia Download Destination and enter your library card, and you'll be good to go. On a side note, our libraries are still open with limited services and hours. Curbside Holds Pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details or call the library with the questions. If you have questions, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. One of the big things is right now we're having a subscribe drive. So if we can get 100 people on our YouTube channel, we can actually get our own customized YouTube address. Or you can search YouTube for GCHRL videos and that'll pop up as well. Okay, so let's go ahead back here. So let's talk about what we're going to learn today. We're going to be covering our uh, our <laughs> we'll be covering our uh, Google School uh, class today. So let's go ahead and I'm actually going to post the handout in the chat. Just give me a second to get that loaded. And do you have any questions before we get started? All right, so I'm posting that in the chat so you can open that and download it too. And let me open it in our So we can view it as well. <laughs> Neat getting a little bit of the sunshine from outside, but sometimes it gets on my face, which is kind of funny. All right, so as that loads, here it is. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Now what I do when we actually in class and stuff, I actually have it printed out so that you can have it and look at it and of course take it home with you as well but do realize that um, big recommendation is probably to have me on a smaller device the video and stuff and then actually nope, nope, uh, actually be able to pull the document up so you can kind of flip back and forth which is what I'm going to do as well all right so let's go ahead and let's talk about Google a little bit so you probably, I would recommend, of course, having a Google account uh, for this class so you can kind of follow along with me. Uh, so you'll be, you know, <laughs> we'll be on the same page, if you will say. So let's talk about Google. And we're talking about all the free stuff that you have, and all you need is a free account to access any of this. Even though I, there is one thing that I'm going to talk about later, but they do offer more of a premium service if you're interested in that. But maybe you're maybe you're not maybe you just want to use the free part which is what i use as well so we'll talk about google their search query okay we're going to talk about using internet seek and find as well we'll talk about google books google docs google photos google scholar and a big one here google translate okay so if you're not familiar with that one that's a big one we'll also talk about the photo scanning as well so what is google Okay, Google was founded in 1998. Okay, it is what is considered a search engine. Okay, uh, it scans websites for keywords and phrases and indexes uh, those pages based on the content and keywords found. Okay, so keywords is a word or phrase that is typed into a search engine to find content on a website. Google's even a verb now. I Googled it. 
so you will be in contact with folks, even talking to them, and they go, you go, oh, well, I, le- I read about such and such. And it's like, oh, well, you should check that out. And it goes, okay, well, can you see me the site? And they'll go, oh, we'll just Google these keywords, okay? Or Google this, and then it should pop right up. Uh, John Wiley, the lead designer of Google Search, said that every day 15% of the daily searches, the questions people ask Google, have never been asked before, okay? Uh, How would you like a job that 15% of it was uh, different? That doesn't sound like a lot of fun because it would be constantly not sure what to do. So we're actually going to talk about using our search. Okay, so let's search. First part of our class will be about using the search engine. We'll also be talking about uh, looking stuff up. Oh, neat. Our Google actually has some Christmas lights to it. So let's go to google.com. Type in the address, type google.com, and hit enter on your keyboard. In our basic computer class, we talk about HTTP or HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. And a lot of the times, our websites now do not require the www dot. Google is one of those that doesn't. More and more will in the future. That will not require that. Um, so you type that in, and our browser finishes the address for us. So if we hit enter, there you go. It takes you to google.com. So Google's doing something kind of neat. It looks like they're putting some Christmas lights on their Google. For Google, if I click there, there we go. So I'm going to talk about holidays around the world. Okay. Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, the Canadian Boxing Day, Christmas, all kinds of different holidays around the world. So Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. (laughs) All right, so we're going to go back. And they actually have a nice share button. I usually click up here because sometimes it'll be like a little fun game, a little graphic even. I remember one time they did Pac-Man on here, which was pretty neat. So we have our search, okay? So let's go here and let's look. Let's see. So we have our search box. We click on our search box and we're going to search for Columbia County Library. Okay. And then we can hit the enter key on there or we can hit where it says Google search. Now, what is I'm feeling lucky? I'm feeling lucky usually is it sending you to the first website that it thinks um, is most relevant to you. Okay. So let's do that. And it'll actually try, start typing in all kinds of stuff. There we go. I'm even typing in Columbia County because I've searched Columbia County before. It pops up and I can just click it. Shows that our, our library here in Evans, our Columbia County Library. If you scroll down here, it'll pop up and say we have our different categories. Okay. We also have our images. We have our website title, which I believe, yeah. So we've actually had it where, and I think I will go ahead and fix this. I remember that they've actually changed this. So let me see if I can do this real quick. <laughs> They've actually changed it. So now the actual address is above, which is kind of interesting. Okay. So, whoop. Zoom out a little here. And I will send that to the back. Let's see if I can line it up just like I had it. Eh. And now our website title is actually changed because now it is below there and the actual address, they're actually showing that now on top. Okay. 
which is a new thing. We still have our description here. We have our categories. We have our, our title here. We have our description. We also have our embedded information here on the right side. Okay. All right, so whoop, there we go. <laughs> kind of flipping around there. There we go. Okay, so we have our categories up here, and these categories will change when it pops up. It thinks that you're looking for something, give you some other suggestions. In a second, we'll deal with the rest of them. So here's kind of a typical search. Now, one of the things I want you to think about as well is if you are using a device like Siri or you're using um, uh, Alexa or Google or anything like that, hey Google, you realize a lot of them actually use the, the search just like we do here is using our keywords, okay? So this will actually, this class, thinking about keywords will actually make you a better uh, searcher for information with those uh, devices okay so it comes up here it gives a nice little suggestion here on the right side big thing is you always want to make sure how accurate this is I and if, if there's a restaurant if you're headed to a restaurant let's say it closes says on the website it's going to close at nine o'clock but you're not sure a lot of the time the phone number is right call them and make sure I've actually had that happen to me headed to a restaurant wanted to make sure because it was another 30 minutes to drive to get there so I called them. They said, no, we actually are closed um, an hour earlier tonight. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, thank you for letting me know. And I, I, I think, I don't know if I had told them it was wrong or whatever, but that, that's okay. Anyway, so we have our address on the top, okay? And if we hover, we access our link. We actually have a suggestion. And a lot of the times, we actually will scroll down and look. And it will actually give recent searches on here, related searches, search ideas. And we get this big long Google here to get see more results we click next and it takes us to the next page but if we look at the top I'm gonna to click back but if we look at the very very top here we can actually see that there are over a hundred and nineteen million search results here so that's a lot of hitting the page next 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 so I don't want that to be you because well, I don't want this to be you because one of the things is they say, statistically speaking, people come in, they, they look at the first two pages, and then they go, oh, I can't find the information I'm looking for. You know, I give up uh, that situation. I will, don't want that to be you because the first two pages, you know, clicking on stuff, try to focus on what you're searching for. Can you get more specific? Can you add more keywords? Um, my big goal is to always find the information I'm looking for at least on the first page or I go well Maybe I need to add some more keywords. Maybe I get a need to get specific Maybe there's another way to say the same thing and I will talk about that in a minute So we actually come up we have their GCHRL uh, or, uh, Org website giving information about the Evans library. Here's our main um, website too. Okay, so this is like a, a the sub page of that as you look and see and then we also, if we click that, that'll be our main web page. There are also links to our Facebook page and things like MapQuest. Here's a government page giving information about it, you know, and so forth. Now, let's talk about our different categories. So, let, well, hang on. Let's see. So we search for that. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself here because uh, let me make sure here. Okay, so let's talk about our, our different categories, okay? So if I come here and we actually can see that there's maps, there's images, there's news. So let's talk about images. So this is our big general search that we have. Let's click where it says images up here. Now images should only give you results that are pictures, okay? Google a lot of the time doesn't actually know what the picture is of. It just knows it's either on a web page that has the same name or it's on uh, the this company's main website or whatever. 
So you just have to realize a lot of the time it doesn't know what that website is. If I scroll down here, I can see lots of pictures. I can see, oh, people at concerts in the past and stuff out there. We'll have concerts out there in the future, of course. The library section. There's our lake. Go, come and walk around. There's our little park. All kinds of neat things. And then we get closer, start seeing other libraries that may not look so familiar. Uh, so you have to realize that a lot of times it may not be sure what it is. Now, how are you supposed to actually use images? Well, images is really supposed to be used more like a visual um, uh, in search engine, okay? So this is what it's really supposed to be used for, and I'll tell you why, how people actually use it. So let's say I was walking down the street one day and I actually saw a dog uh, walk by and it was a black dog and it had pointy ears and I know it was a terrier. And I just spelled that wrong but it's okay. Anytime you spell anything wrong, you click enter and then you can click here and it'll actually let you fix it too. Okay, so let's look and see. No, that wasn't it. No, that wasn't it. No, no, that looks similar. I'm not sure. I can't see the body. No, no, no. Let's see. No. Let's see. Aha, I think that up oh, that looks like it. Let's see, click on it and immediately it tells me that it's actually a Scottish Terrier. Okay, so, aw, so lots of picture, that's not it. Lots of pictures of Scottish Terriers and stuff. There you go, Scottish Terrier. So just by visually looking, I can find out what this is. Now, this also makes a really great and I won't do it now because some people don't like this, like trying to identify a snake or a bug in your yard or something. It could be very helpful, say snakes in Georgia, and it could pull that up and be listed there. Okay, so do you realize that? And I'll, um, that's one way, kind of use it like a visual search engine. And then you can, of course, go to the website and then click there and it'll actually take you to the website and have more information. Now. If I had typed in black dog point ears, it possibly would have come back with the website, but I wouldn't, I would have had to do a lot of clicking and a lot less, you know, visually searching. Okay. So big recommendation on that using images like that. Now I'll tell you the way people actually use images most of the time. They're working on a project. They need an image for like, let's say a newsletter or they need an image for, um, you know, a school project or whatever, type in there, click images, and then they like copy paste or download one of the pictures. They put it in there, not really thinking about making this more of a visual search engine. Um, before Google actually had images, there were some companies coming out saying they were a visual search engine with pictures more, and then Google kind of adopted that, and then we get images. Now, let's look here too. I'm actually gonna go back to our search. Anytime we can actually make changes up here, we don't have to go back to the main Google page. I can go up here and let's click news. And what exactly is news? Now we probably will not find a lot uh, on here, but there you go. So the big thing is news only shows you um, news sites. Okay. So you'll see the local TV stations like Gusta Chronicle might pop up in here all kinds of different websites. It's just focused on um, news organizations, TV stations, newspapers. Um, it, it tries not to have as many blogs on here, but let's say you're trying to you know, get specific about what information you're looking for. You need it from a news source. Click news. There you go right there. Now, let's talk about some other things that we have that are available to us. If we go over here to where it says tools, do you see that? If I click tools, a whole new area will show up below um, our categories, okay? Now, this is also available in the general search and images as well. 
Um, but most people talk about using this for news or you know in the in the everything or all. If I click where it says uh, recent, do you see this? So only give me recent sites within the past 24 hours. Do you see these? A lot of the times it'll say three hours ago, three weeks ago, two weeks ago. So if I go up in here and hit recent, let's say 24 hours ago, and then it's only going to post things that have been posted just a few hours ago. How could this be helpful? Well, one of the big things is you can actually say in the past month, past week, past year. Let's say that there's uh, you're having problems with a, a new cell phone or a new device or something like that. And let's say it's like an iPhone. Maybe you've gotten a new iPhone and you know it's the newest one and now you're having some problems with it. You want to see if anybody else is having problems with it. If you just typed in here iPhone, you know, whatever the glitch is, let's say the camera's not working or something. Say, uh, and the best tech idea is turn it off, turn it back on, update the software. That's the best advice I can give you on uh, tech stuff in general. Turn it off, turn it back on, check and see if the software has been up to date. There you go. So you come in, you find out something's wrong with the camera, and if you just typed in iPhone camera problems, that could pull up articles from you know five, seven years ago, but you're like, well, this is a brand new phone, this should be a new issue. You can go in here and say, let's say the past month, um, who's posted articles about this or news things. But the big one here is our custom range for news articles. So you're only searching news stuff and here's your custom range here, or you can do websites as well. So some people may not may have been using Google for years and not know that this is available, but it's a huge resource for me if you're looking for something specific. And again, our goal is to not sit here and click next, 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 next on that big long Google thing, click a website, come back, because after a while, like I said, the average, furthest they'll go, is only two pages. And if we can work on our searching, you know, trying to be specific about searching and stuff, then we won't have any problems like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's talk about our next section here. And if you click more here, you can actually see the other We'll talk about books here in just a minute. So let's go ahead and we're gonna actually go back to our normal search. We're gonna start learning a little bit more advanced searching and then we're gonna be doing a seek and find, okay? Okay, so let's start out with just a general search. Let's search ice cream, okay? Oh. Sorry, I clicked the wrong thing. That was from our class this morning, making our snowman. Let's go back to all, and let's click up here. And remember, you can come up here and just delete what's there at any time, doing backspace, and then type in ice cream. Hit enter. All right, so I'm already getting, it's telling me, that's great. It wants to tell me where ice cream is in our Evans area and Augusta area. Evans, Augusta, CSRA. A history of ice cream, all this stuff. I could be clicking here, you know, ice cream near me, kicking Google, you know, for a very long time. But what am I actually looking for? Well, I'm actually looking for a recipe. So let's get more specific. I don't want to sit here and go to different. Um, ice cream websites. Let's type in recipe. There's a recipe. All right, getting closer or warmer or cooler if we're talking about ice cream. <laughs> so if we come down here, only ice cream recipe you'll ever need. The best, the easiest, homemade vanilla. Only ice cream recipe you'll ever need. Right there it says best ice cream easiest and this is a new thing that Google will do too people also ask and you can click the little drop down arrow and it'll actually give a nice little clip of the site they clicked on okay Google's trying to basically give you websites that people have clicked on previously with your search engine I mean with your keywords okay here's ingredients here's all recipes we're getting closer, but I'm looking for what? You should have already seen it. Peach. 
I want to make some peach ice cream. Oh, there we go. Peach ice cream recipe. Now, again, if you come in, uh, even talking to Google, talking to Alexa and the rest of the other devices, if you go in there and say, Alexa, what is a good ice cream uh, or Alexa ice cream ice cream recipe peach that could actually come into that is being able to search a lot of those they try to get it so it's more of a sentence you ask them questions that's fine if it is having issues there might be a way you need to ask it something different try to keep this in mind about what keywords could you ask at one time okay so Here's some good recipes here. Old fashioned fresh peach ice cream. Does anyone make peach ice cream? <laughs> and here's the all recipes, so I'll click that. And there we go, we found our peach ice cream recipe. That seems very simple what maybe we have covered, isn't it? But guess what, a lot of times when we're searching for something, we may not think, oh, well, I need to add more keywords. I need to get more specific. I need to, what's another way to say this? So that's what I'm trying to get across. So let's talk more about our searching. So we did our ice cream. We did our peach. Now let's talk about traveling. So if I just pull it up and, and, and this, you can search for wherever you want, but we'll say England. So if I just go here and I type in England it's going to give me the history of England it's going to give me news about England is England a country people ask <laughs> they usually call themselves the UK talking about football has videos included things to do in England, which is kind of what I'm looking for. And then uh, if I go up here and I actually change this and I add the word travel, boom, that's completely changed my, um, my, my resources already, hasn't it? Now you will see sometimes where it says ads up here, it means it's an advertisement. You could go there, you could not go there if you want to but somebody's paid to make their way up to the top. Here's Rick Stevens. Um, he's been around for years, talking about different places to go, things to see. So very trusted um, advice. And then we have a little bit more. He, even it says English Travel Guide. If I click that, so Google has a little bit of English Travel Guide, a whole site pops up. It's even got bookmark stuff. I like this it's already telling us where Stonehenge is and everything maybe we'll do our Google Maps at Stonehenge and walk around a little bit British museums Big Ben places to go stuff like that okay travel alerts so just by one click we've actually gotten a lot of information haven't we add in the word travel now we did see this but we had to go through all that other stuff as you see three things down it popped right up so just adding the word travel all right now let's talk about exact phrases I'll mostly just talk about this so the big thing is adding quotes okay it could be someone's name it could be you know well a quote it could be a lyric of a song it could be a lyric of a poem or something put it in quotes that cannot break it up so if I put in uh, the two words time machine okay not only will it pick up the book time machine the movie time machine it also will pick up a poem that says one time I was walking down the road and I saw a machine drive by okay those words have already been the time and machine words have been broken up but if I put time machine in quotes the good thing about that is it can't break it up it can't move it around this is great for names like I said and it'll pull it up and you'll get that only results you'll get is it exactly like that okay all right what about salsa now the interesting part about this is I'm not sure if it's just mostly because it knows like a lot of my search results but if I go up here and I type in salsa hit enter 
I'm actually logged into Google now, so it actually is remembering some of my previous searches. So if I type in salsa, come down here, here's a dish for salsa. It's talking about salsa restaurants near me, near me, near me. And then here it says fusion ballroom salsa dancing, sauce, homemade salsa. So I'm getting a lot of mix of stuff. So let's say I uh, used to, I would get more information about salsa dancing than it used to be. And I don't know if Google's just come up with a better need to add uh, salsa to stuff, you know, or what. So if I go in here and I could add the word recipe and it would get real specific, that will actually get rid of anybody saying anything about dancing. But I want to show you an example of using the minus sign. For me, the minus sign has been a huge um, uh, learning experience. So if I come in here and I put a minus sign in front of a word, and it could be a website as well, okay? A word or a rep website, you can actually come in, and the thing about this is you can actually do a minus uh, dance, and it actually will stop having the, the um, uh, it will not show you any any websites that have the word dance in them, okay? So that's a huge um, you know, trick, I guess you could say. Of course, adding more keywords could help too to cut out things that you're not looking for. But again, you could add the word minus Wikipedia or minus whatever else. So if there is a website that you don't want to go to, don't want to visit, there you go right there, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and let's go to our next part here. Let's talk about, oh, I just kind of showed this. So if we add the word dogs in there to our search, change it to dogs. We'll get videos, puppies, animals, and then we'll get like a website like Wikipedia. Just realize that Wikipedia is a user submitted site, okay? It's information from websites that you may uh, receive and it's user submitted information. It can be a lot of great resources information on here. Do you realize that they actually, it's completely free service, but you can actually, and it, the, some of the articles can be changed. You can actually change the articles if you wish, okay? You can become a user and post your own too. So the problem is sometimes some of the stuff may actually be opinion. One trick is you could go down here at the very, very bottom where it says resources, okay? And maybe go to these websites if you were working on a paper or something like that. But if I go up here and I actually did not want Wikipedia and I do a minus, You'll see when I scroll down, now it will not actually show uh, Wikipedia.
Sorry, I had to step out for a moment. Okay, so we're talking about doing our dog search. We actually turned off Wikipedia, okay? So we can't now see that in our search results, okay? So let's go back. Now, here's a newer one that is kind of interesting. So let's say that you're not sure what the word is. Now with Google, you probably could type in, um, you know, the general words. But let's say you're really not sure. Well, you could actually use something like an asterisk, okay? With an asterisk, let's try this. Let's say that I have a phrase and I'm not really sure what all the words are, but it was like a something is a something earned or something like that. I don't really remember but I'm actually going to use asterisks to do that. So let's change this. Let's say A, and the asterisk is the above the A, A something, something is a, I don't know, something earned. All right, let's see. Boom, it comes up with a penny saved okay is a penny earned okay perfectly Benjamin Franklin penny saved is a penny earned okay all right another thing that we can do is if you ever have trouble trying to find uh, information on a website why not use Google to actually search that website okay and I'll tell you what I mean by that uh, there used to be a website I'd go to and it was a, blog, a tech blog site, very informative, a lot of great information. The only thing was that it had a terrible search. Now, I know a lot of the websites have gotten better with being able to search their own website, but even if it was an article that was only like a week old, either I'd have to flip back a bunch of pages because they would post, you know, five, ten things a day. And the search, I'd try to, and I, I just, sometimes I couldn't even find it. So I actually found out about this, so I've actually used this a lot uh, in the past. Basically, it's using Google to search a specific site, okay? So, whoop, I clicked the wrong thing, hold on. So I'm actually gonna use these keywords here. So electric cars, and I'm gonna say site colon, and then type in a website, and it actually will search CNN for us. Now, the interesting thing about this is uh, they, they'll actually search more websites than just that one, okay? So if it has any subsites like money.cnn.com or whatever, it'll pull those up too, but all my search results will be just from that one website, okay? So that can be a big help if you're looking for something you know, specific, certain website and hopefully that'll help you in the future too. Got some more cheat sheet kind of ideas here on this website but let's go ahead and let's talk about our internet seek and find okay. So first thing is let's search for your name okay. So go ahead and search for your name or John Smith okay. So if I type in my name, used to, oh, so, let, let, so the reason we do this is not only to kind of look up yourself, but also think about if you had met somebody new and they decide to do a search on you, what might they see? Would they actually find your social media stuff? Would they actually be able to see maybe you were in the newspaper winning an award or something? A lot of stuff on there you don't really know. So if you actually type in my name, one of the things that's interesting is apparently there's like a, a criminal story that's happened, but used to, the big deal was uh, myname.com actually comes up with an auction site. That's right. Mm, oh, it's an auction site. Yeah, sure. So if someone searched for me, they might assume that that was me in some way or another. Just like if we had someone else's name, we might type that in and then assume that that's them. So realize that just because the information um, you know, is information on here, people that have the exact same name or anything like that, that might not, not actually be that person, okay? So just realize that. So 
The good thing about that is if you do a search, uh, it may not, if someone does a search on you, just realize what they may or may not see. So let's use our internet seek and let's find out things like what does ROFL mean? So let's say we were type texting with someone and a family member or something, all of a sudden they said ROFL, okay? If I just type that into Google, Google a lot of the times, if it's defining a word or something, we'll talk about that in a second, it'll actually pop up and tell you what it is right there. So instead of even to asking the person, now what does that mean, okay? So it pops up right here, let me know what it is, uh, rolling on the floor laughing, so R-O-F-L, okay? All right, so let's keep working on our seek and find here. So who was the 20th president of the United States? When and where was he born? Okay, so let's go back to our search. So how about a 20th US president? I even spelled president wrong, so good. So click there. Up, oh, James Garfield. Now, I don't know if he owned a, 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 a orange cat or not, <laughs> but his last name was Garfield, so there you go right there. So we have all kinds of things, information. We have his Wikipedia website we could go to. talks about his years of service. It's only given us the information um, right here. Now, if I scroll down more, here's another Wikipedia page, and here's whitehouse.gov. So if I actually click here, should probably get a whole bunch of information. So he was born in Ohio in 1831. Okay, so there's information. Can we use this as a reference? Absolutely. It's a .gov site. Only the government can have a, a .gov site. Okay, so let's go back to our search here. Now, if we had not found the information we were looking for, we could have used the word born. One website might use a different word, birth. Another website might use DB, okay? So do you realize that when we're searching for stuff, um, think about is there a different way to say the same thing, okay? Now let's go ahead to our next part. Let's talk about what is the main ingredient in shoe fly pie. So let's go back, go up here and change. If I just type in shoe fly pie, ooh, is my thing spelled that way? It sure is. So I actually spelled it wrong, but it still popped up with it, didn't it? So here's recipes, shoe fly pie. It's got information over here. Let's see if I scroll through. So what do we want to know? Let's see, what is the main ingredient and can we find a recipe? So if we kind of go down here, it already is giving us the recipes, but we could add the word recipe. And it is an, a, um, an Amish uh, pie, actually. So let's do New York cooking. And it pops down here. If I scroll down, Dutch yoder. And it actually has brown sugar in it. Has cinnamon, ooh, nutmeg, ooh, doesn't that all sound good? Ooh, molasses in it. The funny thing is it is not a very sweet pie at all, okay? It's not very sweet. Even though you would think that these ingredients to make it delectable, it's actually not. I'll say it's a very humble pie, which maybe that has a part of with its, um, you know, history or whatever. Okay, so we find out that it's molasses is actually its main ingredient. Okay, that's actually what's in it, uh, except for the flour, uh, you know, in it the most. All right, now let's kind of do a fun one here, and I'm going to kind of, because of time, I'm going to walk through the, the area down here. So, who's, or add, tell you, uh, give it to you as a challenge. So, whose face is on the $10,000 bill? Okay. And what is the largest bill value ever printed? Okay. So let's go back to Google. Ten thousand dollar bill. Ah, 
Okay, so what are we getting here? Ooh, what do we get? Dot org, the bill museum, okay. $10,000 bill. Now this is one that we had to really search before previously, so Google's actually kind of weaved out a lot of things here. If we go down, here's our images that are that is here. So if we go to this one, it actually comes up and it's a uh, Sam, uh, Sal, Salmon P. Chase, okay? Does the name uh, Chase sound familiar? Well, who, is, who was he? What was the deal with this? This actually um, was more or less a bank note, okay? Uh, it did have the, uh, okay, hang on, let's see. Purposes transfer. There you go. So it actually was not a real uh, money. It was mostly like a bank transfer back and forth. This is actually given more detail. I guess either they found more information or it's different information. I have to equal that to another place too. There you go. So it wasn't a real bill. It was actually passed uh, back and forth for banks for them because they couldn't do it digitally loan each other money, okay? Uh, so Salmon P. Chase was actually the tre Secretary of the Treasury, and Chase, even though that is named after him, it's not part of his company or anything like that, Chase Bank, you know, Chase credit cards and stuff like that. This is a gold certificate, technically not a bill. Anyway, so I'm going to give you a, a fun thing to do here, and then we'll kind of go on with our rest. So I encourage you to follow the money trail. Again, kind of learn what we've uh, used, what we've discussed, have information, add more information to it, have a little more, add a little more to it, keep searching, keep searching. And as you see, mostly when I'm searching for something, I only scroll down maybe to the first 10 results. If I don't find exactly what I'm looking for, I'll try to add more keywords to it. Think about, is there a different way to say the same thing, you know, and work on it that way, okay? So basically what I want you to look for is a challenge here. The name of an old black and white movie about planes from 1930, okay? The hint, it was the same directed, it was directed by the same man that built the largest wingspan span plane in the world okay only one was ever made so try to find out the airplane's name it had two names its real name and the name the public gave it the man's name the movie's name and also uh, what was the largest where is the largest wingspan plane right now so that's my little bit of a challenge to you and you can find that stuff very easily through Google and also uh, using the the skills that we've just covered All right, so let's go ahead and let's look at our special keywords, okay? These are kind of words that you may or may not realize actually basically turn something on inside Google. So if you're looking for song lyrics, okay, or maybe you don't remember the name of a song, try to type in the lyrics, but add the word lyrics to it, okay? Another big one is using weather. So if I actually go back to Google, and let's say I don't want to go to like, let's say weather channel or something like that. I can actually type in, let's say, um, weather and then boom, it pops right up just by adding the word weather to something. Okay. Gives me the weathers for the week. And this actually comes from weather.com and it's right here in Google. Okay. Is it going to rain? Nope, no rain. Not too bad. It's going to be nice and cool, but not too cold. Cool, but not too chilly. All right, so let's talk about time. Time is a big one as well. You can also type in a zip code uh, too, and that'll work. So if I go up here and we used England earlier, 
So if I just add the word time, what happens? Boom. Now, I'll tell you this, if you type in time zone, it actually will pull up a whole bunch of different websites like this one, and it'll tell you details of, oh, you should add this or subtract that. But all I got to do is go to Google, type in the city or the state or the country, and it actually will pop up and tell me what time it is. And the really important thing is what day it is right now. So right now, what is it? It's actually tomorrow right now. It's Wednesday. No, today's Wednesday. <laughs> today's Wednesday. It's eight. They're, they're ahead of, I don't know why I said that. They're ahead of us. Um, anyway, so it's December 2nd, okay? Anyway, so if you need to call somebody on a certain day, maybe they live in another country, maybe they live in a different time zone or something, Easiest way to know exactly what time it is there right now. Type in the name and the address, type in time, and you're good to go. All right, let's talk about defining a word, okay? So before we did the dog, so let's just throw out the word define, dog, and then boom, it's right there. Dog. <laughs> and of course, it will uh, spell it out for us, which can be a big help too. Dog. Dog. Here's our noun. Here's some pictures. Canine gives a nice example of it. That also talks about other stuff here as well. So instead of going to dictionary.com or something, you can do it right here in Google. All right, let's talk about movies. I know not a lot of people are going to the movie theaters right now, but if I type in, let's say, movie. It should pop up, so not really many movies being shown right now, but there you go right there. So it kind of connects up. Usually it gives a whole list. Different movie theaters will give the different times and stuff, and we'll want that information for the future. All right, so let's talk about converting, conversion or converting things. So if I go on here and let's say, I wish there was an easier way to kind of get there, but it really kind of starts with starting off with, and it remembers what I've typed before. So 95 pounds and kilograms. This is actually the converter that pops up. So I can choose pounds, uh, the British stone, if I want to, pounds, ounces, grams, kilograms, and all that, 43. Now the big thing about this is like I said, I wish it was a little bit easier way to pull this up, but if you go here and click, um, you can type it in there and it actually will pull up this whole chart and you can actually go to area, fuel economy, mass, and there's length as well. So you can make something, what's the inches and yards and feet and all that kind of stuff, centimeters, and everything like that. So that's a huge way to know that. Basically just kind of type in what you think, you know, in, whatever and usually this pops right up okay now we did kind of talk about our search results here already so we'll kind of skip over this part we'll skip over our maps as well and kind of get into more of what free services that we can get from google we have our shopping on there which we'll talk more about our shopping class i uh, actually have that coming up and of course we have our videos as well and we talked about images. So let's go ahead and talk about our more specific services that are free from Google. Uh, I will show you this. If you click the dots over here, a lot of time you can see get to the services uh, very quickly here. Just go to Google, click the dots there and it'll show them so where is books? There's books right there. And if you want to see more, scroll down to the bottom and it'll take you to a full uh, page of stuff. All right, so, but I'm actually gonna just go straight to books.google.com and it's gonna pop up here. Now, I'm actually gonna search for, let's go back to our handout. I'm actually going to search for Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. They also have magazines uh, listed as well. 
anything that's out of print, uh, you can usually find it on here um, or non copyright anymore. You know, Shakespeare, Alice in Wonderland, all kinds of stuff. We actually scroll through here, you'll actually see things that'll say read, read, but then there are ones here that are books that they want to sell you. And if you go there, you can get like a preview. Now, what's the difference? Some of these books that are out of print will get what they call updated. And so a, a author has changed them in some way or added pictures to it to make it more you know, interesting to a more modern audience. But then you have to buy the book. That's when you'll see the preview. But if I go here and I click read, it actually pulls up the read part. And there's our pictures. The reason I use Alice in Wonderland because the original book had pictures in it. Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank and of having nothing to do. Once or twice she had peeped into the book her sister was reading, but it had no pictures or conversations in it. And what is the, the use of a book, though, thought Alice, without pictures and conversations? So if we scroll down here, it'll actually have the different pictures in there. Okay. And you can actually go view all, clear all search. You can actually show it as a book if you want to use it to flip, kind of flip pages back and forth. Okay. You can also choose what section you want to be on. And let's see if I can close this here. So you can actually download it as a free PDF as well. Another big thing is that you can actually search the book. Now, let me make sure I'm in the right place. Okay, so this is search the book here. So if I type in the word, let's say cat, it'll search the book just like if you had it in your hand. So if you actually had the copy of that book or that version of that book, you can type it in, it'll actually tell you what page to flip through. That direction, the cat said, waving its right paw around, lives a hatter, and in that direction waves the other paw, lives a March hare. Visit either you like, they're both mad. <laughs> okay, so basically lots of books on here, lots of things to read. There actually is an app that you can download for eBooks, uh, the Google Books, and read all that stuff as well. There are magazines on there also and just kind of search and it has works on all lot all kinds of different devices all right so let's go ahead and let's talk about google drive a little bit All right, so if we just go to drive.google.com, I'm gonna drag this over here so y'all can see. So this is my drive. I just typed in drive.google.com, and this does connect up with the, the Google Suite, which we have a whole separate class that we uh, use to cover that, okay? So if we come up here, um, it actually uses um, Word documents are so basically creates um, like Word documents, like Excel documents, like PowerPoint documents to create something new. You go up here and say Google Docs. Let me show this real quick. Also, you can upload your own files and it will convert them so you can edit them. Or you can actually upload other files that are not, you know, Office or music files or something like that. But do realize you only have a certain amount of free space, okay? So if I go New, Google Docs. And this is online. Like I said, we have a whole suite uh, um, that we have to talk about. So the big thing about this is here is basically an online word processing program. Uh, why use Google Docs? The big thing is you can do it on any computer. And this also allows you to save it. Uh, you can save it as if you need to download it. You can download it, make, make something on here, download it as a Word doc 
or of course it's saved to your cloud that you sign into and then when you go someplace else or home or work or anything like that then you can actually pull it up and it's online as well okay but you can download it as a, as a doc file if you need to so basically it's kind of like the usual uh, redo undos on here they have a spell checker changing you know your fonts lots of different fonts on here you know alignment bullet points numbering all kinds of stuff like that other uh, big thing is that you can actually share uh, the documents online with others okay share work share one document so let's say you're working on a group project for school or for a business you can actually share one document and then everybody can edit it and it actually will keep track of who edited what so that can be a really big help so you go oh well you know when did somebody change this or something like that you don't have to worry about that because it actually um, you know is saved already and you'll and you'll know who's changed what all right so let's talk about our Google photos a little bit so I'm gonna go to photos.google.com and I'm actually gonna open an album that I have some plant pictures of some plants I took but I can still use this as an example so basically this is an upload pro uh, upload um, cloud service that you can save stuff to okay big thing about this is you can store your pictures when you open your pictures you can do a little bit of editing we have a full of uh, photo editing class that will probably be doing in uh, we will be doing in January because a lot of people get a lot of new um, things so we'll be talking about that and basically you can upload um, style now like I said it was uh, free until July is my understanding that the website is talking about now uh, to upload as much as you want as long as you have it set to high quality the other big thing is to actually have it so that you have a app on your phone that you can automatically have it back up everything to there um, they're not discontinuing anything they're just not going to allow you to upload unlimited anymore it'll just be that 15 gigs of space that they give you for free man so I've been enjoying this for years and sadly they're going to get to a, a, a fee about this but we'll look and see if um, I may or may not pay it it depends on how much the price is and if there's other services as well so big thing about the app is you can put it on your device your phone and it'll automatically back up your pictures to the cloud service as well okay another big thing is actually using the feature on your phone once it backs up a whole bunch of stuff if you want it to delete it actually has this uh, where you can go on the app say delete pictures that have been backed up only and then you're not worried about well where did it go um, or which picture should I delete I want to make sure that they've been backed up it'll only delete the pictures that it has um, backed up easy way to share pictures lots of albums instead of just instead of sharing one or two pictures through email or like social media or something this way if you take a hundred pictures at like let's say a wedding you can share all of them in about two clicks and send someone the email uh, share the other big thing is and people will ask me this it goes can you set up sharing absolutely if I go up here and I do share I can actually see who I want it to share with control who can share with and also um, in the menu I can go back later and actually unshare uh, that that uh, with them so let's say and I people ask me that it goes okay well, I don't want it just to be a, only the person that has that special link can see your pictures without having to log in you can set it up so they have to log in on a Gmail account um, but realize you're in control you can uh, turn off uh, sharing at any time now a big thing is the photo uh, the photo called the photo scan app okay big recommendation on that let me show that to you real quick this allows you to scan old photos 
very easily and we have a nice little video so this is a free app from Google I've even been asked to do a presentation about this to a genealogy club um, in the past so let's watch our little video here once upon a time before there were smartphones People took real photos, printed on actual paper. Photos of siblings, of moms and dads, of birthday parties, of mullets, of grandma playing with dirt. Photos of the people that haunt your house. And selfies, before they were called selfies. These fragile pieces of paper are your memories. They're your family. They're your history. They're your regrets. So it's a good thing all those precious memories are safely backed up and perfectly organized in a nope. They're in a box in the attic, which is like the 87th best place they could be. <laughs> get, get. Maybe it's time to get out the gigantic flathead scanner, find the right cord, download the driver, and bam. Photos saved forever. And bam. Wouldn't it be great if there was like a technology that was kind of like a mini scanner, like a handheld? Oh, hello. With the photo scan app, just hold your phone over any printed photo and go boop, 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 done. And you've got a high-res digital copy of the original without any glare. And it's not just a photo of a photo, because that looks like this. And if you have Google Photos, all your photos will be organized by face or place. It took you four and a half hours to get ready for this photo. The least you can do is spend a few seconds to scan it forever. Photos from the past, meet scanner from the future. Photoscan by Google Photos. Okay, so big recommendation on using that app. It's a lot, of, it's a lot easier than using the flatbed scanner and it does pretty good high quality pictures and it's pretty quick. So pull out that shoe box get to scanning and this is what it's like if you just use the camera phone and this is what the pictures will look like if you use this you know it's capturing four pictures and then merges them together okay big recommendation about making sure your pictures are flat okay so let's go and I'm show you a quick little they have like a little video here about using uh, Google Photos so this is the Google Photos app that I was talking about. One thing that's really great is if you're using your cell phone, most of us now have our GPS on all the time, you know, for different apps we're using. So we take a picture, it'll have a GPS location on it, and it makes it really easy because then you can just type in the state or location, and then it actually will pull, pull right up to show you your old pictures. So I think this show you but anyway so this kind of gives it a little bit of a view if I go back up yeah so this is kind of usually what you'll see you'll see your pictures here organized clicked them and they're on the cloud okay all right so let's go ahead to our next part Let's talk about Google Scholar kind of briefly here. It's kind of more specific to someone working on a project that they need um, peer-reviewed information or scholarly information. Google Scholar, a lot of the, you know, we also have access to Galileo at the library. You just need to ask the librarians for what the password is. And it also will get you um, ready to search for 
you know, scholarly articles and stuff. Okay. Full articles, abstracts, all kinds of great information. All right, so let's talk about Google Translate a little bit. big thing is to have this on your phone so everything I'm about to show you it really helps out with it being um, you know like a device on your phone Okay, so basically, you can type in something here. I'm going to say hello, and it's going to translate it, let's say, to Spanish. Hola. You can hit here. Hello. And you can also have it switch back and forth as well. It'll actually come up and give you some suggestions about it, information about it. Now, do remember, this is a computer doing translation, so you may actually want the other person to know that you are what you're doing so if I do the drop down here I can actually see all the other languages uh, that they have here Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. let's see Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. and also it will translate documents as well if you upload them too now, big part about this is using the Google Translate app. And let's see, I actually want to show that. And usually it's like right here. All right, hold on. I got to figure out where that is. Okay. Uh, give me one second here. Usually I come here, I guess they've changed something. Okay, so I'll show it here, I guess. May be able to go to it later, but the big thing on this is you can actually uh, use it to vi change text. Let's say you go into a restaurant, and let's say you're in another country or something. You go in the restaurant, and you want it to translate it to English or a different language. You can actually hold it up, and it will virtually do it right in front of you. Okay, that seems magical. Yes, it is magical. Now, some of the things here you may have to make sure that you're connected to the internet to be able to do. The and you can pre-download some of these um, uh, languages as well. One big thing here is the one that's called conversation. I know someone that's traveled out of the country and the big thing is that they've used that uh, and actually had while shopping someone pull out their phone and say Google Translate and actually you know encourage them to type something to talk to them uh, back and forth so that they can do business. Okay. So we have our one section here and it also doing voice so you can actually talk to it and it you know type there and then they can talk to it and type there you know instead of them typing back and forth it doing voice uh, conversation which is that setting right there okay uh, it does have a writing one but but um, I haven't personally used that before so lots of languages on there of course it is completely free do remember it is just a, it's a program that um, you know uh, be very positive about it but just remember don't want any kind of misunderstandings just let them know that you are using a, a translation app so that's Google Translate translate text or 
upload documents from and to different languages. Great app, has voice for most languages, has an offline mode. Here's your chat back and forth with the, the voice. And of course, live camera, text translator, online only, okay? So you hold it up in front of a, a, um, a sign and it translates it to your native language. Okay, so great thing to have. And it's free too. So let's go ahead and let's talk about a ton of different um, products that Google has. Okay. It has to offer, I'll say it that way. So this is their products. I want to see all products is what we want to see. Well, hang on, I want it to... Hold on. Let me move things around. Apparently they've updated this section. Anyway, so it has a store. Talks about the different things that they do. Things that they fe the feature. Let's see. Here's our suite that we talked about. Chromebook stuff. They have a whole section for Google now, Classroom. Let's see if that's what I'm looking for. I don't think that's what I'm looking for at the second. Here's our Google Translate that we talked about, okay. There we go, that's what I wanted. So let's look at our little video. We've all been there. You have something in your phone that you need to translate. Maybe it's a text from your coworkers, a YouTube comment, or a post from a friend, and you just need to know what it says. But it's actually a lot of steps to translate it. You copy it, switch apps, paste, translate, reply, switch back, and hit send. You do that with every message. Over and over and over. So we had an idea. What if instead of switching apps, Translate was accessible from inside any app? so you could translate any text right there. It's something we're calling Tap to Translate, a feature in the new Google Translate app. Here's how it works. Say you're chatting in WhatsApp. Maybe your roommates all speak Hindi, but you don't. And you're wondering what this is. Just copy the text like you always do, and the translation appears right up here. You can even hear how to say it. Shubh shukravar. Maybe you want to impress them by replying in Hindi. So you type, let's party. You drop it in and hit send. You did it all without switching apps. And of course, it works in any app. Anytime you copy text, you might want to translate. It works offline, too. So if you don't have a connection at the moment, you can still translate stuff. Tap to translate. Get it with the new Google Translate app for your Android phone. There you go. All right, so we'll get close out of that. OK, so. There we go. There we go. What I want. Do you speak English? Mm. Mama, come on. Mama, come on. Okay.
For the last 15 years, we've been mapping the world together, helping you get wherever you wanted to go. And today, there is so much more to explore, like your new go-to cup of coffee, or the modern art museum, free on Fridays. Best tacos in town? Beat the rush. Pick up basketball in your new favorite park, or book a table for the tastiest pizza you haven't eaten yet. From getting you around the corner to helping you discover the world, there's more to explore with Google Maps. Now, the other one I'm going to talk about in just a minute is a really important one. Oh, hang on. What did I do? Oh, it's an important one because it's, they also own uh, Waze as well. So they're trying to add more and more things to Google Maps, more information. Maps. They help us get to where we need to go. They make the world more understandable. And this early desire to document the world, to navigate it, has been with us since the dawn of civilization. This is the first map we know of. It's believed to be from around 600 BC. We've been on a mapping journey for over 2600 years. It's one of humankind's driving forces. And even after all that time, the job isn't done. At first, progress was slow. Latitude and longitude came along 800 years after the tablet. A thousand years after that, the Chinese invented the magnetic needle. A burst of mapping activity in the 15th century expanded the boundaries of the documented world. New technology meant even more rapid progress. The marine chronometer opened up distant horizons further accelerating the age of discovery. During the mid-1800s, the first aerial imagery was taken from hot air balloons. The 20th century saw exponential progress. In the 1950s, the first computer-generated map, satellite mapping in the 70s, the advent of GPS in the 80s. Fast forward to 2005, when Google joined this ancient story with our first local search index an attempt to build a catalog of where businesses were in the real world. Clearly the moment was here. We would soon have a useful and meaningful map of the whole world. Turns out it was a lot harder than we thought. We learned that the world is very dynamic and data quickly becomes stale. If we were ever going to succeed in having a meaningful map of the whole world, we needed a new approach. New in-house mapping techniques were developed by combining as many data inputs as possible and tightly coupling them with visualizations built on our street view, satellite, and aerial imagery assets. We were able to use humans to quickly map dozens of countries. We were helping millions of people every day, but the map of the world was still incomplete. The last three years have gotten us closer than the previous 20. Deep neural nets have rapidly accelerated our ability to produce map data directly from imagery. Machine learning also helped us guard against spam and abuse, extract information from the web, and to make our operations more efficient, bringing maps to more than a billion people. For the first time in this 3,000-year mapping journey, the completion of this task is within our sights. Ours is the generation that will deliver a useful map of the world everywhere people live and work. This new map is changing the way we travel, how we respond to crisis. It will power virtual assistants and augmented reality experiences. This new map, like the first maps, will change the world. The funny thing, even though it's been nearly three millennia, with this new map, you'll be able to hold it in the palm of your hand, just like the Babylonians once did. Wow, that was interesting. Okay, so, talking about Google Maps, all the different things that they have. Of course, getting around, that's what we just saw. All right, so let's go back there. And don't forget about Google Earth as well.
give it a moment to load. There's your Google Earth right there. We can actually zoom in and zoom in and zoom in. And we did say something about Stonehenge earlier. So let's see if we can do that. Let's see. There you go. Is that Stonehenge? Yep. And whoosh, there we go, whoosh. <laughs> it looks like it's in 3D that they've done it a little bit too. So let's zoom in a little more. Yeah, there's Stonehenge, kind of roughly 3 d There's a full zoom. If you want it in 2D, 3D. And let's see here if we drag our little guy out there. Where can we get? Can we get standing right there? Let's see. There we go. So whoosh, there's Stonehenge right there. See, I told you we we're gonna to go to Stonehenge. So that's Google Earth. And also we used our street view, didn't we? All right, so let's go back. And of course we used our search so let's look at our for all. So lots of different stuff that's on here. Like I said, this is actually uh, one of the harder places to get. It used to be kind of a, a three clicks and you were there. We actually had a class that we talked about the cardboard. Doing apps and stuff with it, looking at the 3D stuff. The Chromebook. There's saving our contacts on there. There's our Google Drive, Google Docs. There's Gmail. What is Google Alerts? I've a, I recently someone asked me about that. I said, well, let's say you do a Google search and it doesn't come with a, any results. It's something special, something really interesting that, that you're looking for. You can actually add an alert here and see if it'll actually pop up and you'll get a message letting you know if someone has posted something new about it, okay? So it's like a constant search. And it looks like they've added some new categories here since we last had class. Oh, neat. Okay, so there's an app about visiting some art museums. Hmm, very interesting. Talking about color. See what Neil Armstrong wore. See if we can see that real quick. Google's constantly adding new stuff and updating stuff. There you go. Oh, look at that. So full 3D scan. scan. Can I zoom in? Okay, I just use my arrow keys there. Zoom in. Nope. Oh. So where is my controls on here? Okay. See, they have the augmented reality, but there's the spacesuit. And I can scroll in and out, and then kind of turn him around a little bit. Pretty cute. And I wanted to get a good shot of his, the, his, the helmet, but I guess it doesn't really work that way. But anyway, that's pretty cool. All right. Oh, there's the thing. There's art. 
turn yourself into Van Gogh, turn an art filter on based on a portrait. Interesting. So this is actually a whole new category that they've added about um, museums. Interesting. Art in motion. They've added a whole bunch of fun stuff in here. Digital culture. National gallery. Zooming in, zooming out, finding things. Country's history, history and art. There you go, 360. Horseback riding in a canyon. We're traveling by horseback on the Peekaboo Loop Trail, one of the more strenuous routes in the park. As your horse squeezes through narrow slots in the rock, a vast collection of hoodoos appear, like an army of terracotta warriors awaiting their marching orders. Here, around every corner, through every slim opening, something new is waiting to be discovered. We're in a crevasse, about 30 feet below the surface of the glacier. It feels so still, but the ice is actually moving as it flows downhill. A week from now, this place will look completely different. So take a look around, and then climb out of the crevasse to see how the glacier has receded over the years. Welcome to the world-famous Natural History Museum in London. You're now standing in the Fossil Marine Reptile Gallery. While dinosaurs ruled on land, these strange creatures dominated the oceans. These are all plesiosaurs. Their sharp teeth and long necks earned them the nickname Sea Dragons. that a far more dangerous predator roamed the Jurassic Sea. The Romaliosaurus. This extraordinary creature was like nothing that exists today. its keen eyesight and sensitive snout to track down prey. Maliosaurus gradually disappeared. All right, so we found a new section. Fantastic. Cool arts and culture. And we actually flipped through here. There's also a video chat 
app that you can download as well. Good thing about that, it's supposed to, it works on, of course, iPhone and Android devices also. This is Google Expedition. So this is one of the big classroom ones that's really interesting. Let me show you this one real quick. If you could pick anywhere in the world that you want to go, where would you want to go? I would like to go to the moon. Thailand. Ancient Greece. India. To Nigeria, my homeland. One or maybe all of the seven wonders of the world. When you explore different places, you have the chance to actually learn something new. You want to be able to show the kids that there's something outside of your community that you could go to and learn from and that there's other places you can visit. All right, so let's do our objective and we'll talk about the lesson for today. We're gonna to take a field trip to Verona, Italy to see the place where Romeo and Juliet lived. I'm going to take you on this field trip under the water. Okay, you guys ready? Pick up your devices and look in your cardboard. What is that? I Are see there a shark. Whoa! 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 It allowed us to go somewhere we wouldn't normally be able to go. Are we in China? This is the Great Wall of China. We got to see the place itself so we could actually understand what she was talking about. How long would it take to walk the length of the Great Wall of China? So much more enriching than just showing them a picture or just having them read about it. This device can actually make us go to places that we've never been before. It brings the lesson to you. You have to see it for yourself to believe it. There's so much other places to see so you know that it's never going to end. Exciting. All right, so let's go on back here. So lots of great things on here. Like I said, you can kind of scroll through some of these. There's the Google Photos, talking about that. There's the books that we talked about as well. Google Tasks, Google Keep is a great app to use as well. So you can keep everything on there. It's kind of like a uh, the notes app that you can do and it'll do uh, task and everything as well and you can share that with friends or family as if you want to too we already covered the photo scan then the big thing is let me show you the the tilt brush and we'll start finishing up class here so this is some of the things that they actually have going on with some of the newer headsets that are VR experiences and I'm trying to think this is the one that shows the art and the person. That's the one I want to show you. also one about Waze and we'll finish wrapping up here so Waze is owned by Google now uh, the big thing about this is it's like a social network so one of the things is why you're using Waze you can actually have it so it'll come up and say alert above there's a car on the side of the road there's a traffic stop please let's pull someone over up here and it'll actually tell you stuff like that as well um, the cool part is they actually had some that you can download voices Recently, I even tried the one that's Batman. They had one that was the Riddler as well. That was kind of fun. The only thing was it didn't tell the street names. It mostly was like, turn left in 500 feet, you know, or something. It don't really have a video, I guess. Anyway, it kind of pops up, and it is kind of a different. It's a kind of a, you know, have both. I'd recommend uh, 
you know, both or whatever. You know, and it shows the little characters driving around and everything. So, there you go. All right, so kind of finish up class here. They even have the YouTube VR. So this is with the headsets or with the Google um, But there's a whole channel for virtual reality stuff. If you get the uh, headsets, just with uh, basically using a cell phone with the cardboard, uh, then you can watch a whole bunch of the different stuff in VR 360. Let's see if I can see one real quick. There, this one looks interesting. So I encourage you to explore um, all of this and just kind of get a good feel of what's possible, what's uh, you know free through Google, especially while we're kind of home hanging out and stuff. So let's talk about what we covered today. We actually covered a lot, didn't we? With our Google School, we covered doing our search query. We did an Internet Seek and Find books documents we get Google photos and scanning as well and also we did a uh, scholar uh, translate and then a whole bunch of different apps 3d and everything too so thank you for being here today I'm going to go ahead and fit wrap up class here and talk about some of our other classes that we have coming up so do you have any questions any questions all right, so tomorrow we're actually going to be doing a fun class. In the morning, we're going to be doing Gadget Help on the Grove Town Facebook page, so come join me for that. Um, if I don't get a lot of questions, I'm going to start talking about a lot of the free resources from the library, especially talking about our new Libby is what we'll be talking about. And then also tomorrow afternoon, come join me for doing digital coding with uh, digital snowflakes with Python. And don't forget next week we're we'll going to be doing holiday gift and um, gift gadget ideas and also a new cord cutting class with our Raspberry Pi stuff and our other holiday fun Christmas stuff. On a side note, our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside holds pickup is available. And of course, you can go to gchrl.org for details or call in the library with questions. Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
Right now we're doing a subscribe drive. If we get 100 subscribers to our YouTube channel, then we can get our own customized YouTube address. Or search YouTube for GCHRL videos and it'll pop right up. So thank you so much for joining me today. Glad that you were here. And I will see you guys next time. Have a great day. Stay safe. Bye-bye <laughs> for now.